As 2023 draws to a close, we're now looking ahead to the new e-bike technology that's coming out in 2024. So we're talking new motors, we're talking new batteries, we're talking new automatic gearing. Sadly, we're not talking lightsabers yet. Or are we? Hi, I'm Jedi Jason from eBike Center. And to start with, let's talk about the new motors that we've got coming in 2024. Kicking us off, we've got the new Bosch Performance Line SX. So this is the lightest motor in the Bosch lineup. Comes in weighing two kilograms. It's really a gravel slash light EMTB motor or even a commuter motor as well. It's kicking out 55 Newton meters of torque. However, it does have a peak power of 600 watts, which is comparable with the Performance Line CX, which is their most powerful motor. So it's gonna give you that boost and that level of uh, assistance that you might need for a short period of time when you're climbing, when you're basically doing your, your largest ascents or your almost difficult terrain. So it's a, a very good all-rounder for, yeah, for a light EMTB, and there's gonna be lots of gravel bikes and light EMTBs that are gonna feature this motor. For instance, we know that the Kalkoff, they've got a lightweight commuter coming with that, and that's gonna be a bike in the sub 20 kilo bracket. So yeah, interesting stuff from the SX. I know it's been launched for a little while, but we haven't seen it yet and we're looking forward to seeing lots more of it in the new year. Sticking with Bosch, we're gonna look at the batteries that are coming with this SX motor and others as well. So they've now got the Compact 400 battery, which you may have seen on our Marlin Plus video that we did a few months ago. Uh, in addition, they've now got the Powermore range extender. So that's an, a nice new development from Bosch. They didn't offer any sort of range extender for their bikes, apart from literally piggybacking an additional full-size battery. So the Powermore will give you 250 watts of additional power. It weighs around kilo, kilo and a half. And like, uh, like some of the range extenders that we've seen from Orbea or Specialized, it will clip onto the battery, uh, battery mount and looks very much like a battery mount. And it gives you the, the advantage of running a smaller battery for most of the time and then just topping up that battery when you, when you need to. So there has certainly been a, a movement in the industry to get the biggest battery possible in these bikes now. And we're starting to see that not everyone is actually after that. Not for me. Because it does influence the handling of the ca characteristics of the bike. It does make them heavy, it does make them more cumbersome to lug around. So for a lot of people, they don't need that full power the whole time. They could get away with a 625 battery, let's say, for their general mountain biking, maybe even something slightly smaller, like the 400. But for those days they want a longer journey, you can now clip this power more in there as well. It takes you that little bit further, but it's not there all the time. Just speaking of range extenders, we also, well, we hear, we don't know for certain, on the grapevine that Fazua, they're releasing a range extender as well to go with their uh, their motor system that we've seen on things like the high bike like and the focus jam sl so again that'll be useful to see that i think it's going to be it's going to give a quite a significant range actually once you add the, the range extender to that because the battery is already relatively big so that's another nice development to keep an eye out for as well going back to motors again specialized they've updated their 1.2 motor so that's the, their smallest motor that they fit to their sl range and that's now got 43 percent more power um, so we're talking 320 uh, watts of peak power and 50 newton meters of torque. So they moved that, that motor into the same bracket as their competitors, really. So they're going up against things like the TQ, the Shimano EP8 RS motors, and the Fazua motor, for instance, and uh, uh, the, the Performance Line SX that we just mentioned a minute ago as well. So yes, that is seems to be the sweet spot for these mid-powered bikes now is around 50, 60 newton meters. So we've seen that now on the Levo. We've seen it now released, which I think yesterday, on the Kinevo. That is a fantastic looking bike, that new Kinevo SL. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the Vardo SL uh, follow suit as well with that motor, because it looks to be the same carcass. They've just changed the, the insides or the, or the firmware to extract that little bit more power. But that unfortunately was probably a weakness of the, of the Levo SL and the Kinevo SL in the past, is it probably didn't have quite enough power Whereas 50 Newton meters to 60 Newton meters, let's say, seems to be the sweet spot. So yeah, very much looking forward to seeing that. Going on to batteries, we did mention a little while ago the obviously the range extenders that are coming out from, for the Bosch. But on the other end of the spectrum, the, so the, the big burly batteries, we've now seen Giant have released on quite a few of their big bikes. So they're uh, things like the Rain uh, and the Trance. They're now releasing an 800 watt hour battery. So they've increased some of those from 750 to 800. Holy cow. So that is a very big battery indeed. So for some people, particularly those that are doing enduro riding or let's say downhill riding, and they in the past would have taken a lift up to the top of the hill, they can now look to climb that themselves with the bike because they've got so much battery power. It's not gonna be for everyone because that is a very big battery. It's gonna make the bike heavy and a bit unwieldy, but for downhilling and, and enduro stuff, it's gonna work quite nicely, but possibly not for everyone. Certainly those that are looking for, for trail uh, and all mountain, 
cross country, it's possibly a bit too much. It will suit someone, but maybe not everyone. So next up, we're moving on to auto shifting gears, and that seems to me to be the big thing for next year. Everybody likes new inventions, new technology. So it's the, the biggest development we've seen in the last couple of months, or certainly the biggest announcements, and it's what's got certainly us here at eBike Center more excited than say bigger batteries or slightly adjusted motors. I feel like this is a bigger shift in terms of uh, e-bike technology. So we've seen recently Shimano, they've got their uh, the DR2 system, which has been around for a while, but it now integrates with the Shimano EP801 motor and the EP6 motor. So you can't retrospectively fit that to older EP8 motors, but all the new stuff, you can now utilize the DI2 system along with the Link Glide technology and, and cassettes and drivetrains um, to have a fully automatic drivetrain on a derailleur system, which we haven't really seen before. In addition to that, we've got Bosch are running and have done for a little while the Enviolo gearing and the Roloff automatic gearing system. Specialized are running the Enviolo uh, system as well, but these are more for hybrid bikes. You're not going to see these fitted to mountain bikes. You might see it on the odd Reese and Muller, but like the Super Delight, but that's not, it's not an out and out mountain bike. It's not something you're going to want to thrash around. In addition, we've also seen the new SRAM motor and gearing system combination as well, which again, I'll go on to in a second, so stay tuned. So on the Shimano system, this is called their auto shift facility. So it's using link glide gearing. So uh, it's their e-bike specific gearing, but what it does, it has the ability to have what they call auto shift as well as free shift. So auto shift is a fully automatic mode. So it's for a derailleur system, so it's properly designed for mountain biking, which is, it's just, pretty new technology. You can literally set it up to ride and forget. You just ride around and you don't have to think about your cadence or your terrain, you just ride and the, and the gearing system will automatically shift for you, which means that you'll never find yourself in the wrong gear when you shouldn't be. You're gonna get a better lifespan out of the componentry because you're not gonna be running in, let's say, turbo mode on one hand and then you're riding in the hardest gear on the other that is going to wear away your, your cassette very, very quickly. So instead, the gearing will automatically adjust for you, which means you can never find yourself in the wrong gear. Also, it means you're going to get better range out of your battery and a much more natural riding feel as well to your e-biking. So the Link Glide system, it comes in 11 speed and it's running the XT derailleur system, DI2. It also comes with what they call free shift, which they do free shift on the hyperglide system as well, which is the 12 speed variant, which is the one above. But the 12 speed variant doesn't have uh, the full auto shift. It just has what's called free shift, which is what I'm going to talk about now. And free shift is the ability to change gear without actually rotating the pedals. What? That's crazy. So this is going to be very useful for when you're descending. So when you're going downhill, you can keep your, your feet completely planted and flat but you can change the gears. What will happen is the motor will move ever so slightly, just enough to free up the uh, cassette at the back and move, the, so well, let me try and rephrase that. We'll move the uh, cassette at the back enough so that the derailleur can shift the chain from one cog to the next. Well said. So it's only a, a subtle movement, but it's enough to mean that you can, as you're descending, you can get yourself from a climbing cog right down into your, into your hardest gear without actually having to rotate the pedals, which makes it much more secure for you when you're going downhill because you can stay planted. It's also just quite easy and it's pretty cool, <laughs> frankly. As much as anything, it's very cool just to be able to change gear without actually having to rotate the pedals. In addition to this, there's also the Q's drivetrain, which essentially has replaced the Dior system. So the 10 speed and the nine speed is gonna be replaced with this Dior setup. Again, you're talking uh, link glide, so you've got an e-bike specific drivetrain um, and it's DI2, so it will do all the auto shifting that we described as well, but it is for, uh, yeah, it's, it's the slightly lower spec uh, variant of it. And with all the systems, there's an app that you can sync to the system, so you can adjust how the motor, um, so how the, the motor and gearing combination works for you, so you can sort of fine tune that. And with all of these, there is a manual override as well, so you don't have to rely on the gearing system. You can run it naturally, and you can then decide which which mode you want to be in as you climb, as you descend, or you can just flick it over to auto mode. Maybe just for your your commute too. Let's say your your wherever you want to ride, where you're going to up to the Peak District, or if you're going to Rogate, or wherever it might be, you, you might commute to that pint, uh, that port, that that bike park, I'll get the words out, to a pint. <laughs> <laughs> and then just not have to worry about the gearing at that point, but then you manually override it for when you actually get, uh, get yourselves out on the trails. Before we move off from the Shimano auto shifting system, 
Another thing we're very much looking forward to is we have uh, partnered up with Merida and we are planning on producing a video um, which takes an E160 from Merida with obviously with the Shimano motor system, but it doesn't come as standard with the auto shifting gearing, but we're going to convert it. We're going to produce a full video showing you from step one all the way to step 10. I don't know how many steps there are, but we're going to say 10 of how you shift all, shift all these, I keep saying shifting now, uh, <laughs> how we convert the bike from a standard derailleur system to the auto shifting system and then tell you how great the bike rides because I'm guessing it's going to ride pretty, pretty great. So next up, we're talking about the SRAM powertrain. So this is where SRAM have basically from the ground up, they have integrated a motor and drivetrain system, both of their own devising, well, sort of. We actually know the motor's made by Bros, or Brose, however you want to pronounce it. So it's gonna be the Mag S 90 newton meter motor, but it is SRAM tuned, uh, as far as we're aware, as far as they tell us. And then you've got, uh, yeah, the, the drivetrain and the, uh, the motor are synced together beautifully, much like the Shimano EP8, uh, EP801, sorry, and the, uh, the DI2 system. But it's also got what you call pods, pod shifting system. So it's two axis powered, so either completely Bluetooth, um, there are no cables between the two. Shifting modes, one on the left and one on the right hand side. I'll go through those in a minute. And the crux of what this is all about is exactly the same really as what's going on with the Shimano system. It is auto shifting. They've got auto shift and they've also got coast, which is very much like free shift, which is what Shimano have as well. So it is much the same. We're talking uh, an EMTB specific powertrain gearing system that is designed for off-roading simplicity. So you just get on the bike and you ride it. You don't have to think about gearing if you don't want to. You can override the gears or you can leave it to it. The other thing that's very different about this to pretty much any other e-bike motor out there, there are only two modes of assistance. Just two? There is range and there is rally. And that is all the left hand pod shifter does. You're literally doing up or down, range or rally. Those two modes can be adjusted via an app, but you are literally looking at, when you're cruising along, you will be in range. And then when you're looking to climb or descend anything more technical, you switch into rally. So it's very, very simple. And on the right hand shifter, we're talking the ability to go up or down the gears manually, uh, as you would do with a normal, a normal gearing system, a normal Eagle drivetrain or any drivetrain for that matter. But you've also got one button that will take you up into auto shift if you want it, or out of auto shift. And the most complicated factor you've got in there is that you've got uh, the ability to change or delay how quickly the auto shift operates. So if you wanted to have the drivetrain um, changing really quickly at a high cadence, because that's how you ride, you can do it. If you wanted to have it set up for a lower cadence and the changing's happening a little bit slower, you can do that as well. So it's a very simple system that you can tweak quite significantly. There's, there's quite a lot of customizable options, but what they've designed is a system that kind of it's, you, you point and shoot, you get on it, you ride, you enjoy yourself. You don't have to think much more of it. So it's gonna suit some riders really, really well. Others who like to fiddle and change gears all the time, maybe not for them, but for, us, for a lot of riders who are just gonna get on that bike and just thrash it and enjoy yourself. And you can focus on where you're going. You never have to think about changing gear, what mode you're in. You know you're either in range or rally. You know you're either in auto shift or you have to manually shift yourself. It's just simplicity and it gets you out on the, out on the trails to have fun, which is what it's all about really, isn't it? So there we have it. We've got two auto shifting derailleur systems designed for e-mountain bikes. One from SRAM, one from Shimano. They're both doing very similar things. I wouldn't be surprised if Bosch have something in the pipeline themselves to work with the derailleur system for e-bikes, for e-mountain bikes, sorry. But stay tuned and we'll find out. Other things we're looking forward to in 2024. These ones are more e-bike center specific. Please go on. So we are pleased to announce that we will be an Orbea demonstration center as of next year. So if you're looking to take an e-bike from Orbea out for a longer test ride, so we're talking wilds, rises, gains, things like that out for a much longer test ride, you can get in touch with us either uh, directly or you can go by Orbea's website to arrange a test ride. And you can have the bike for a, an extended period to really get to grips with the bike and to decide whether that bike is for you or not. So stay tuned for more information on that and we will update you as and when there is more information available. Moving into the winter, we are gonna be running many more of our maintenance sessions in our Burdham store. Yes! Yes, 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 yes! 
So for those that are nearby or those that fancy a trip down to see us, we will be running evening sessions where we can teach you how to look after your drivetrain, for instance, how to change tires, how to change your, your cassettes, anything, lots of useful information. Certainly going into the winter where you're gonna use your drivetrain, uh, it's gonna be under a little bit more stress. It's worth coming down and we will have more information on that again, which we'll release on our social media channels. So make sure that you stay subscribed or if you haven't subscribed, get yourself subscribing because there is lots of information that will be coming your way, lots of useful free content as well as useful free information about how you can look after your bike better or how you can improve your riding practices. So just stay tuned, like, subscribe, you know, you know the drill. Another thing we're looking forward to in 2024 is we are now a Super 73 retailer. So if you're looking for an e-bike that's just a little bit different, that's gonna turn a few heads, then take a look at the Super 73s. They are pretty awesome looking bits of kit. They are completely unique. There is nothing really like that on the market. And uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. So wanna pop down, take a look, or take a look at the website feel free. So thank you very much for watching this video. That pretty much wraps it up for now. There will undoubtedly be more e-bike tech and more e-bike bikes that are released between now and next spring, let's say. So please stay tuned to the channel. There'll be plenty more information coming your way. And if we don't see you in store, we will see you in the next video. May the force be with you. <laughs> Doesn't turn off now. Ooh, shiny. So good. There we go. And that is a wrap. That is a wrap. <laughs>